everyone, and welcome back to Utility Sports. Today, we're going to be looking at another 2021 NBA mock draft. This is my latest rendition here for the channel. I'm really excited to break down some of these potential fits, landing spots for some of the young stars. Before we jump into today's video, I just want to urge you guys, hit that subscribe button. Also, leave a like and a thumbs up on today's video. It means a lot, letting us know that you guys really appreciate and enjoy the content we've been posting here on the channel. We want this to be all about you guys, what you guys want to see on the channel. So I hope you are enjoying the content as it comes out. Also subscribe if you are new and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on more utility sports content moving forward into the future. So now before we jump into the actual mock draft here, um, we will be doing just the first round in this video, but there will be a second round mock draft coming out based off this. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. And before I make the first pick here in this draft, I want to urge you guys to hit that subscribe button uh, if you're new. And also, again, one last time, I want you guys to comment your player in this class that you think is going to be a bust. This is something different than we've commented on some of the other ones. I want to know who in this class you think will be a bust. So now let's jump into it here with the number one pick in the draft. We have the Detroit Pistons here on the clock. They're a team that's going to be looking at a few different players. Troy Weaver said he's gonna bring in about five guys for workouts. So this is not an open and shut case for Cade Cunningham to be the number one overall pick. I think that Troy Weaver is really going to take his time analyzing this. However, at the end of the day, I do believe Cade Cunningham does go off the board first overall. Again, this is not what I would do necessarily, but this is what I expect to happen on draft night. I think Cade Cunningham, oh, whoops, I did, I clicked the wrong guy, I guess. Um, I clicked Jalen Green. So let's go back, click Cade Cunningham here. I think he goes first overall to the Detroit Pistons. Now I think that they will look at trading the pick possibly to a team like Oklahoma City who has a ton of assets. I would actually love the Thunder to jump up for Cade Cunningham because they have so many picks that they could really line up a nice offer for Detroit and basically make it impossible to say no. You bring in Cade Cunningham then if you're the Oklahoma City Thunder, keep him in Oklahoma. I think that would make a lot of sense. But Cade Cunningham here in this mock without trades goes to the Detroit Pistons. I think it's a good fit. Uh, not necessarily the best fit with Killian Hayes, but long-term Cade Cunningham is the better player. You don't worry about fit when you're in a rebuild. You worry about bringing in top-tier talent, and that's what Cade Cunningham is, the best player in this year's class, in my opinion. Pick number two, we have the Houston Rockets here, and GM Raphael Stone has a big decision to make. I think pick two is really where it starts to get a little muddy because there's a few different ways that Houston could look. They could look at Jalen Green, who's a dynamic scorer of the basketball, can take the take guys off the dribble, score on pull-up jumpers in the mid-range area, can pull up and transition from the three-point line, extremely athletic, going to be very good off-ball as well as with the ball in his hands at the NBA level. I think there's a lot that he brings in a very, very deep class. This class is very talented, one of the best classes I've ever analyzed. And Evan Mobley, the other option here, a seven-foot center, good athleticism, great length, able to move his feet on the space, protect can protect the rim average almost three blocks a game for usc this past year does a lot of things really really well he's going to be a nice rim protector and can function a little bit like how we see bam at a bio play in miami with the ability to switch out on guards occasionally and even win those matchups from time to time mobley's a very unique player but jalen green i think is the better player of the two and i think that rafael stone's going to look for the playmaking guard who can also create his own shot score for himself he has some areas to grow in but I think he's a very NBA ready player at this point. And I think he comes in and really has a chance of being the rookie of the year in year one of his career. Pick three now we have the Cleveland Cavaliers here on the clock. And this is gonna be all about the future for Cleveland. I think that Evan Mobley is probably the pick that makes more sense. Now I think that they will really take a look at Jalen Suggs, especially with Colin Sexton on the trade block. I think that an interesting move would be a Ben Simmons trade to Cleveland. You draft Jalen Suggs and you really start to build up, build up some real guard ability. You have Garland, Suggs, and possibly Ben Simmons. I think that's an interesting trio. But here with how their roster currently sits, I think it's Evan Mobley as a selection for the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's too good, too big, too talented to pass up on third overall, in my opinion. Now for Toronto, of course, they'd be hoping Evan Mobley fell to them, but that's just not going to realistically be what happens. Fourth overall, now we have the Toronto Raptors here. And I think that it's a, it's a two-man race between Jalen Suggs and Scotty Barnes. I think that they're looking to add a little bit more size and a little bit more length, but also some defensive presence as a two guard guy off the ball from Fred Van Vliet. And I think it's gonna be Jalen Suggs. I know I've mocked that a few times here on the channel, Raptors fans, but this is still something to get excited about. Jalen Suggs, really, really good player, played at Minnehaha Academy here in Minnesota. Did a lot of things really, really well as a freshman for Gonzaga as well. One of their best defenders on ball and off the ball also showed a real 
talent as a combo guard, someone who can play make for others, create for himself, really good going downhill in transition, north-south game. Very, very athletic, good finisher around the rim. He's crafty, able to use both hands around the rack. Does a lot of things really, really well. And I think that him going to Toronto is a perfect fit off of Fred Van Vliet. I think they complement each other extremely well. And I think Toronto does need another guy who's a little dynamic in that backcourt as a self-creator and creator for others. Jalen Suggs, one of the best players in this class, is a phenomenal grab at fourth overall for the Toronto Raptors. Pick five, we have the Orlando Magic here. And I think they're one of the teams to watch. They could really look to be aggressive to move up their picks. They've got five and eight. You could they easily see them maybe jump up to three or two, especially with Raphael Stone. He really likes to accumulate assets, he said, when he traded James Harden. He said he wants to build up a ton of picks. So is it possible they move pick two? I don't necessarily see it, but I think it could be a reality. Here, the Orlando Magic with five, though, are going to stay here, and they're going to look for offensive potential. Scotty Barnes, a very nice playmaker, but he's not going to be a guy who's going to come in and score 18 to 20 points a game during his career. He's probably going to be a, an 11 to 13 point per game scorer for a majority of his career, and I think that the Magic are looking for a little bit more offensive upside. So they go with Jonathan Kaminga, the six foot eight wing who played for G League Ignite this past year. He averaged over 14 and a half points a game for them playing against pro players. Remember, the G League is much more talented than college basketball. It's extremely, extremely talented. It's guys who are just one step away from being in the NBA. A lot of them even spend time in the NBA, like Alexei Pokashevsky this past year was playing for the OKC Blue during the G League season, and then he came up to the actual Thunder squad. Talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder, here we have them sixth overall in this draft, and there's a few different ways that they could go. In the last first round mock, I had them take Davian Mitchell, who I think is a really good fit next to Shea Gildas Alexander, and I think would really bolster that backcourt. But I think that they also have to be looking for a little bit of size. I'm split on this pick for the Oklahoma City Thunder, but I think in this mock, Scotty Barnes is the one that makes sense to me. He's a big wing, has real playmaking potential, showed it at Florida State for the Seminoles, playing point guard for the first time in his career. He's very, very versatile on the defensive end, moves his feet well, offers good length. He's going to be switchable. A lot of people love to compare him to Draymond Green. I think that's a very... Very fair assumption. I think Scotty Barnes even is a better playmaker, a little bit more fluid, actually as a half-court ball handler, not necessarily needing the off-ball screening action to set up some of his passes. I think he's a little bit more creative as getting to the rim and then creating for others than Draymond Green is, but I still think that that comparison does hold true for the most part. Pick seven, now we have the Golden State Warriors. This pick, of course, comes from the D'Angelo Russell trade from for Andrew Wiggins, rather, and a pick from the Minnesota Timberwolves. This pick, very, very vital for the Warriors' future because they're looking at the team that had sacrificed a lot of depth when they brought in Kevin Durant. You know, guys like Harrison Barnes went out the door and a few others as well on that roster that were really key. Of course, some of their other role players kind of aged out too. Sean Livingston, David West, uh, David Lee. You're looking at a lot of guys who are a little bit older that were key contributors for the Warriors in their heyday. Now they're out of the league or on different teams. The Warriors need to start building up some of that depth again, and they've got a great starting five moving forward with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, James Wiseman, and Draymond Green. That's a really, really nice, formidable five there. And you got Jordan Poole off the bench now, who's really emerging as one of those key role players, a key bench scorer for them. Kevon Looney, who I think is going to be a quality rotational center yet again, uh, especially if he's healthy. Now it's about trying to build off of that a little bit here. Uh, and there's one guy that I think makes the most sense at this spot, and that is D Davion Mitchell. You're looking at a guy who can function really, really, really well next to another guard. He showed that all year long with the Baylor Bears playing next to Jared Butler, another top prospect in this year's class. Mitchell can move his feet extremely well. I think he complements Jordan Poole in a lot of ways. Jordan Poole not going to be the stoutest defender, but Davion Mitchell is. I think Davion Mitchell is the best defensive guard in this class. I think he's going to provide a lot of challenges for teams uh, with his lateral mobility, how quick he moves his feet, how quick he can cut off straight line drives. He's got really active hands, good hands, and he's a smart basketball player. Coming out as a junior, he doesn't have the highest potential, but his floor is extremely high. He's going to be a high impact guy on day one, and the Warriors are this close to being contenders yet again. I think Davion Mitchell and pick 14 in this draft could help them reach the summit yet again, potentially. Pick eight, we have the Orlando Magic yet again. They went with Jonathan Kaminga earlier in this draft, and I think now they're gonna look for a little bit more scoring upside because at this point, they still need a little bit of floor spacing. They need a little bit of help in terms of generating offense. You've got a lot of nice young quality guards in Cole Anthony, Markel Fultz. They brought in uh, RJ Hampton, of course, in that trade of Aaron Gordon. They've also got uh, some interesting pieces in Jonathan Isaac. They drafted Jonathan Kaminga so far at this point. 
Uh, of course, they've got a nice little young front court as well with Mo Bamba, Wendell Carter. So I think you're trying to find some spacing off that. And Corey Kispert's going to go the earliest I've had him go in one of my mock drafts yet, just because of positional fit and the skill set he brings as the best shooter in this year's class. There's a premium on shooting at all times. Look at how successful Cam Johnson's been with the Phoenix Suns. He's been a key part of their run to the finals this year. And I think Corey Kispert could be looked at similarly as being a, a very, very nice glue guy. I know, I know a lot of people are saying, well, the Orlando Magic aren't ready to compete. Yeah, but you want to improve your roster still day by day. And having a guy like Corey Kispert is going to aid the development of Jonathan Kaminga. It's going to aid the development of Cole Anthony. You want to have good basketball players on your team at all times, even when you're rebuilding. Corey Kispert, sure, he doesn't have the highest potential, but he's only going to be 22 years old. You've got at least 10 years with him if you want for him to be really, really good at basketball. You don't need Corey Kispert to be a star, especially when you've got other players uh, and other picks down the road that are probably going to transcend two lottery picks still at this point. You want to start building out some roster too. Look at the Kings. You know, Tyrese Halliburton, people had questions about his ceiling, but at the same time, his floor has really elevated the Sacramento Kings, who are on the clock at this point, pick number nine. And I think that they're going to be looking for a big wing, someone who's going to complement uh, that young backcourt very well and bring in a little bit more talent. And that's Franz Wagner here out of the University of Michigan talented player does a lot of things very very well now I'm not the highest on him I think that he's got some question uh, I've got some question marks around Franz Wagner rather uh, excuse me and I think that a key thing about the question mark for him is athleticism but you put him there in Sacramento you put him next to an athletic guard De'Aaron Fox you bring him next to a skilled shooter in Tyrese Halliburton Franz Wagner I think is a very nice point forward-esque player kind of like what Joe Ingles does for the Utah Jazz I think he's going to have a nice positive impact in the NBA in what is a very deep class. Pick 10, we have the New Orleans Pelicans here on the clock, and they're a team that I think is very interesting here at this point because there's been one player I've been consistently mocking to them, and I think it does make the most amount of sense here, and that is Moses Moody out of the University of Arkansas, a, a very, very skilled player with the ball in his hands, uh, but also can function off the ball extremely well, which I think is going to be very, very important for the Pelicans. You've got some young players who you want to have the ball in their hands, like Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, and I think Moses Moody can function as a phenomenal spot-up guy off the ball. Now, I think Corey Kispert's the better fit in New Orleans, but I think that they would take a little bit longer of an approach. Go with Moses Moody, who's a little bit younger, maybe has a little bit more in terms of development, even if Corey Kispert was available at this point. I think Moses Moody would still be the selection, even though I think Kispert would be a better fit onto their current roster. Pick 11, we have the Charlotte Hornets here on the clock, and I think that they're a team that's going to be looking for a little bit more from the guard position, especially next to La, uh, next to LaMelo Ball. They need someone who's going to be dynamic, scoring the basketball, and they're going to go with a high potential pick here in Keon Johnson. I absolutely love this kid. Posted a 48-inch vertical at the combine. That's absolutely insane. Shattered the record by two and a half inches. And he's going to be very, very, very valuable for the Charlotte Hornets if they do grab him on draft night because of his ability to attack off the dribble. Right now, you've got LaMelo Ball, who's a fun, phenomenal passer of the basketball but he's not necessarily the most consistent scorer going downhill I think that there's some area for him to improve there I think he needs to grow as a shooter a little bit now that's the big question here with this backcourt you don't have a ton of shooting it's going to be kind of on Terry Rozier to be that spot up guy but he's been very phenomenal as a catch and shoot shooter shooting over 48 percent from three this past year on catch and shoot opportunities very very good in that area I think Keon Johnson comes in probably off the bench early gives them a little bit more dynamism into that offense of course, you're, you're going to tell me that, yes, they have uh, Miles Bridges who can slash, get to the rim, but he does that more off ball. Keon Johnson has the skill set to be a ball handler, you, uh, use the pick and roll to get to the rim, and also just beat his guy one-on-one -on -one with speed, athleticism, and his handle. I think that he's a very nice complement piece to LaMelo Ball with very, very high upside for the Charlotte Hornets moving forward. Pick 12, we have the San Antonio Spurs here, and there's a player here that I think makes the most sense for them at this point, and that's Isaiah Jackson here out of the University of Kentucky. A very, very good rim protector. I think he fits the mold for what they usually look for in a big man. I think he's going to be a nice spell guy early on to Jakob Pertl. Isaiah Jackson, lengthy, long, very, very good. Timing around the rim, averaged over two and a half blocks a game for the Kentucky Wildcats this past year, and only played about 21 minutes a night. So he does a lot of things very, very well. Uh, and I think he's a very undervalued player throughout this draft process. I don't think a lot of fans have an understanding of how good Isaiah Jackson could be as a help side rim protector and someone who's going to be a nice glue guy for a key uh, team. And I think Isaiah Jackson also has some good upside offensively. You look at a guy who's going to be very nice in the role game as a role man. Also 
has a little bit of a semblance of a jump shot, showing that he can hit some mid-range shots for the Kentucky Wildcats. And I think the Spurs, with their ability to develop shooting, could make Isaiah Jackson an interesting two-way player who can maybe space the floor a little bit, but also function in the pick and roll offensively and defensively. He does a lot of things well, and I like this pick a lot for the San Antonio Spurs. Pick 13, now we have the Indiana Pacers here. And there's two really, really talented players yet on the board that I think could very easily be top 10 picks. Josh Giddy, who I absolutely love, and James Bugnight, who I think is a very, very dynamic scorer of the basketball, very athletic in the half court, does a lot of things very well, and just a really well-rounded player. For me, I think the Pacers here go with Josh Giddy. He's got a little bit higher upside, in my opinion. He's a bigger guard, six foot eight, can really pass the basketball. This past year for the Adelaide 36ers, he posted multiple triple doubles, playing in a very, very talented league, the NBL. That's where LaMelo Ball came from, of course, LaMelo Ball played with the Illawarra Hawks, not the Adelaide 36ers, but Giddy playing in the same league as LaMelo posted similar numbers, was just as successful as LaMelo Ball in a lot of ways. And LaMelo Ball last year was a top three pick. This year, Josh Giddy falls to 13. This is an A-plus grab for the Indiana Pacers at this point. Pick 14, now we have the Golden State Warriors here. And there's a few different directions that I think this team could look to go. They could look on the defensive side of the basketball, and maybe bring in a guy like Usman Garuba, who would be an interesting fit onto this roster. He's not the most talented offensive player, which I think is why I'm not going to go in that direction, because I think that they do need a little bit more offensive input when Steph Curry's not in the game. So I'm going to have them go with Jalen Johnson, a big wing, NBA-ready body. He's going to come in and contribute right away, but I think he's got some good potential too. He was very impressive for the Duke Blue Devils when he did play uh, for them. This season, of course, opted out midway through the year, but I think at the end of the day, Jalen Johnson... A very talented wing, can get downhill quick, going to be good in the half court, a little bit of face-up four action possibly. He's going to be the Kelly Oubre replacement that they grab 14th overall. Grabbing Davion Mitchell and Jalen Johnson in this year's draft, very, very good haul for the Golden State Warriors. Pick 15, we have the Washington Wizards here now on the clock. And I think that they're in a position where they take maybe a little bit of a project player, someone who maybe will take a year or two to adjust to the NBA, and that's Alperen Shangun who I really, really love. I think that he's an extremely talented player. Uh, comes in as a big man, six foot 11 or so. Has talented passing abilities, can pass uh, like a guard in some ways. Very, very crafty, but his footwork is unmatched in this year's class. He's the most talented center in terms of his offensive footwork around the rim. He's got up and under moves. He's got drop steps. He can go across the key as a post hook scorer. Uh, and like I said earlier, he can pass the basketball out of the post. He can handle the rock a little bit. I think that there's real potential here for the Washington Wizards with Shangun. Now, I don't necessarily know what their future looks like. I'm not sure if Bradley Beal is going to be there long term. I don't know what Russell Westbrook's future looks like with Scott Brooks no longer there as the head coach. But at the end of the day, the Wizards just go best upside available, and that's all parent Shangun. Now here are the Oklahoma City Thunder on the clock. And I think that this is a perfect way that the board has fallen for them because you've basically guaranteed yourself a, a big man with some defensive potential since Garuba and Kai Jones are both on the board and you are picking two picks later. The Grizzlies can't take both of these guys. So instead, uh, here at this point, they're going to get their pick em of those options. And I think a really, really talented player for them at this point would be Kai Jones. I think that they need a little bit more size, a little bit more length, and some real strength down on the low block. I think Kai Jones is going to be the guy that brings it to him, especially with Moses Brown now out of the picture in the trade to the Boston Celtics. I thought he was going to be maybe their center of the future. They trade him. Kai Jones comes in instead with the asset that they got for him. And I think that this is a very nice move as well. Kai Jones has shown that he can step out behind the three-point line, does a few things uh, very, very well. Also very switchable out in space. I think he's got very quick feet for a big man. Now, I don't necessarily know if that's a matchup you'd love to have all game long by any means, but I think Kai Jones in certain spots could be successful. Uh, kind of like what we saw with Jackson Hayes coming out of the University of Texas. Shaka Smart kind of likes to recruit the same players year after year. Of course, he's no longer with the Longhorns. Shaka Smart isn't. But he had that type of player in mind a lot of times when he was recruiting for the Longhorns. Kai Jones, Jackson Hayes, very similar in style. I think Kai Jones is a little bit more talented, though. A little bit more athletic, even in some ways. Uh, and I think he's a very versatile defender. Now pick 17, the Memphis Grizzlies here on the clock. And I think this is an A-plus pick for them because James Booknight slid just a little bit in this mock draft. The Grizzlies obviously going to grab him here. They need someone who can score the basketball off the wing. I've been saying that for months here on the channel. I think that Booknight would really help elevate this team's offense, especially when John Morant isn't in the game. They need guys who can create. Kyle Anderson, I believe, is a free agent. He did a lot of their creating, and I don't think that's necessarily 
what you want to have either if you're trying to be a playoff team you don't want Kyle Anderson to be your number two creator on this team for the Grizzlies you either need a point guard who can create for others or a wing who can create for himself James Booknight a very good addition here at this point next we have the Oklahoma City Thunder yet again they grab Scotty Barnes to address the wing Kai Jones to address the big man position now I think that they look into the backcourt here and trying to find someone who could be a very very nice player with the ball in his hands and that's going to be Sharif Cooper a very interesting pick here for the Oklahoma City Thunder this is the earliest I've had Sharif Cooper go in one of my mock drafts now it's not much higher than his previous spots I've had him go 19 I've had him go 20 but he slides up one extra pick to 18th overall for the Oklahoma City Thunder because of how much Shea Gilgis Alexander had to create for himself last year you have a nice young backcourt now of Sharif and Shea Sharif's going to help take some of that offensive pressure off of Shea Gilgis Alexander. I believe 85% of Gilgis Alexander's baskets this year were non-assisted. And that's just not something you really want to put that much pressure on your young franchise player. Sharif Cooper going to help him out tremendously. He's going to help create for others, help really improve this ro roster. And you're looking at the Thunder improving in a lot of different areas. You got some length with Kai Jones. You got some more length with Scotty Barnes. And you get some playmaking with Scotty Barnes and Sharif Cooper. Kai Jones can step out to the three-point line a little bit. Sharif Cooper's got to improve as a scorer. But at this point, the Thunder have a lot of time. They can take a high-risk pick here with Sharif Cooper, someone who maybe never figures it out. But at the end of the day, could at least be a very, very good passer. Could run the second unit if he never ends up being a starting point guard. In the NBA, and I think he does a lot of things really, really well, even when he's struggling to score from the field. Also had a very, very big pro day uh, in combine for himself where he measured in at over six foot three. That was really big for his stock. I think it slid him up some boards a little bit. Uh, so that's why we have him go 18th overall here to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Pick 19, now we have the New York Knicks here on the clock. And I think the A-plus pick here for them has to be Trey Mann. Phenomenal grab at this point. Deep range shot creator standing at six foot five. Now he's a little wiry, not the biggest frame at this point because he has to put on a little bit more muscle to deal with some NBA defenders. But I think he's got a lot of skill set that I think is going to translate very, very well. He can shoot the three ball off the dribble extremely well at a high efficiency, shot over 40% from three this past year for the Florida Gators and really showed huge, huge strides that he took as a sophomore for the Florida Gators. Keontae Johnson went down early in the year and Trey Mann stepped up took control of this offense of, of course, RJ Nemhard ended up transferring out of Florida. That kind of opened up some more minutes for Trey Mann, and he took huge advantage of it, becoming the Florida Gators go-to player. Did a lot of things really well, set up others as well for success, showed a nice blend of shot creation and playmaking potential. I think that there's a lot on the table for Trey Mann, the New York Knicks. This is an A-plus pick for them. The Atlanta Hawks here, 20th overall, and they're going to be looking for a little bit more guard help, in my opinion. And I think a guy who would be an interesting fit for them is Zaire Williams because he's a bigger guard, has a little bit uh, of that talent that you're looking for there, and also could play the two through four position. He's flexible, versatile, good athleticism. Kind of reminds me of Nicholas Batum. You guys know I've said that here on the channel once or twice already, uh, but with a little bit more athleticism. Nicholas Batum just always in the right, uh, right place, making the right play, good feel for the game, good passer. With a bigger frame, I think Zaire Williams fits a lot of those same characteristics, but I think he's got even more upside than what we've seen from Nicholas Batum. Again, this is a loaded class. Getting Zaire Williams, 20th overall, that's a, that's a very, very good pick for the team that almost made the NBA Finals in the Atlanta Hawks. They're going to be back and better next year even as their guys develop a little bit more. Key thing for them is bring John Collins back. I think Zaire Williams, a nice little rotational player for them. Maybe they look to move this pick as well, try and upgrade their roster in another way, but I think Zaire Williams would be a good grab if they stick at 20. Pick 21, we have the New York Knicks yet again. They killed it with the Trey Mann selection here. And now at this point, I think that they're going to be looking for another guard. I think it was just obvious how much help that they needed at that point uh, during the playoffs. They just had Julius Randle and really not a lot else for creation. I don't think that they had enough shooting on the floor. So they're going to go here with Trey Murphy the third, who I think is a perfect fit for Tom Thibodeau. He's lengthy, six foot eight, has a very, very big wingspan. A quality defender, of course, playing for the Virginia Cavaliers. You have to be good on the defensive end of the floor. Shot the ball well from three. Uh, a little bit of a slower jump shot. I think that he's got to uh, speed that up a little bit, expedite his shooting process, shooting release. But I think at the end of the day, Trey Murphy, the third, a very nice fit. Can play the two or three man position. I think it's going to be a very, very nice fit off of Julius Randle and Trey Mann. They bring in two trays in Murphy and Mann. I love this a lot for the New York Knicks. I think this is another A-plus grab for them. Pick 22 overall, we have the Los Angeles Lakers here. 
And at this point, there's a few different ways they could go. I could see them going with the guard, someone who could bring in some shot creation potential, maybe someone like Cameron Thomas. I think he does make some sense. Jaden Springer as well here does make some sense. Jared Butler, if he didn't have the heart condition where he might not get clear to play in the NBA right away, I think he would be the obvious pick here. But with that condition, I'm going to have him slide just a little bit. Uh, it does concern me that GMs might take him off the board, uh, off their big board with that concern. So here instead, I'm going to have them go with Jaden Springer, the freshman out of the University of Tennessee. Does a lot of things really, really well. Shot the ball from three very, uh, very efficiently as a catch and shoot guy. I believe he shot around 40% from three as a catch and shoot shooter this past year. And he does a lot of things uh, well as a creator himself off the dribble. Now, big question is, will Dennis Schroeder be back with the Los Angeles Lakers? My guess is no at this point, but you never really know. Maybe Rob Palenka says, hey, let's run it back. Maybe you just never got into a rhythm. We'll try and figure things out. But Frank Vogel, Magic Johnson, just didn't seem like the fit was really there with Dennis Schroeder in LA. Jaden Springer, I think, does make some sense as a long-term replacement. Now we have the Houston Rockets picking 23rd overall. And this is a dream scenario for the Houston Rockets. They're getting one of the guys who I really, really like in this year's class, and that's Usman Garuba out of Spain, played for Real Madrid this past year. Uh, and I think he's a fantastic fit onto this Rockets roster. He's going to be able to play the two through five position, honestly, in a lot of different ways. Offensively, I think he's best suited as a four or five man. He's not skilled enough to play the two or three offensively. But like P.J. Tucker, he brings real versatility on the defensive end of the floor, but with much better athleticism. Way quicker, better makeup athleticism, better verticality. He's going to be able to challenge shots at the rim. He's going to be able to move his feet out in space. Standing at six foot eight, he's a multi-positional defender. The Rockets, after grabbing Jalen Green, have figured out some of their offensive help that they needed to add. Usman Garuba really going to help them on the defensive side of the ball as well. Gives them a forward who can consistently play next to Christian Wood. Uh, also can play off of Jay Sean Tate. I think that this fits really well into their roster right now. And also for the long term, I think it does make a lot of sense for them. And I think here now at 24, they have to be looking for a big man at this point yet. Uh, even though they just grabbed Usman Garuba, I think that they have to look here at some of the other big men, but you just don't necessarily love what you have here at this point. There's just not a player that I'm like really in love with for them, uh, especially with some of the other picks that they could have later on. Uh, in the future, I think that there's other areas that they could address if they just wait here. So instead, they're going to look at JT Thor, the power forward, six foot ten, left-handed, can stroke the ball well. Uh, very nice looking shot for a lefty, uh, especially a big man lefty. He can space the floor for them. And I think he's a nice fit off of Usman Garuba as well. Maybe you play, the, play Garuba at the three a little bit, Thor at the four. Uh, and also I think Thor could maybe work as a small ball five in some ways. He brings some solid athleticism. Played off the ball extremely well with Sharif Cooper this past year for the Auburn. And I think that he would be a nice player off of Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. in Houston. Now, again, he's going to need a little bit of development. He's not a guy who's going to come in and average 12 to 15 points right away. This is pick 24 of the NBA draft. This guy's going to spend probably a little bit of time in the G League. He's going to spend a little bit of time coming off the bench early, being uh, a guy who gets introduced into some minutes. But I think he would also be a really good fit into Steven Silas's offense. You know, he's going to run that high blanket double pick and roll where you have a guy fade, you have a guy roll. Him and Christian Wood could be a little interchangeable in that. I think that he's a nice fit off of Christian Wood specifically. And I think he's going to do a lot of things really, really well in the NBA. I think he's going to have a nice long career. Pick 25, we have the Los Angeles Clippers here. And I think that they're going to go with someone who makes a lot of sense at this point. They need more shooting, even though they led the league in three-point shooting this past year. And they're going to need a little bit more guard help. I just don't know if Patrick Beverly is going to be back next year. Luke Kennard just doesn't seem like he's worked out there as well as I expected him to work out. Reggie Jackson's headed toward free agency after having a phenomenal postseason. He might have played himself into a big-time contract with another team. We'll see what happens with him. But at this point, Nishan Bones Highland out of VCU is the pick 25th overall for the Los Angeles Clippers. I love what he brings. He shot 15 of 18 from 30 feet. That's right, 30 feet. You're not mishearing me there. Uh, during his NBA, combi NBA Combine Pro Day, he's got an elite stroke. He can shoot the ball consistently very, very well from deep. Does a lot of things extremely well off the bounce can function as a catch and shoot guy. And I think the Clippers need a little bit more scoring input, a little bit more uh, offensive efficiency from the point guard position. And Nashawn Bones Highland is going to bring that. I love what he could be as a fit, 25th overall. Pick 26 now, we have the Denver Nuggets here. And at this point, they're a team that I think is going to absolutely love grabbing Chris Duarte. I think he's a much better player than the 26th best player in the class. I think he is should be a top 20 pick 
in my opinion, but he slides a little bit here. Uh, and I think he's a phenomenal fit onto that Nuggets roster. He's an upgraded RJ Hampton for sure. Much better shooting stroke, brings some of the similar athleticism and even a better defender than RJ Hampton. This isn't about potential here for Chris, Chris Duarte. He's an NBA ready player. He's going to slot in with Jamal Murray out, really fills some of that void. Will Barton might be leaving in free agency as well. Chris Duarte, a very nice addition into this Nuggets roster. Pick 27, we have the Brooklyn Nets here, and they have to be looking into the front court. They're going to go with De'Ron Sharp out of UNC, the Tar Heel, who I thought was going to maybe be a lottery pick at the start of the year. Shows some real signs of athleticism as a big man, can run the floor well, has a pretty good uh, feel as a role man as well in the pick and roll offense. But there's some areas for him to improve. He's not the best rim protector yet, but there's no denying that the Nets need a little bit more help in the front court, a little bit more consistency in size. De'Ron Sharp is going to bring some aid and assistance in those areas. Pick 28, we have the Philadelphia 76ers here. Now on the clock, and a, a guy here that I think does make a lot of sense for them is uh, Josh Christopher. He's got real creation potential in the backcourt. Now, I know it's not necessarily what 76ers fans might be thinking. Christopher is a little bit more of a project, a guy you might have to wait on for a short amount of time. But at the end of the day, he's got real potential to blossom as a scorer in the NBA. And I think he's going to be a very, very nice fit onto a team like Philadelphia where you're looking for a team having to address some shot creation. They need a little bit more help in that area. And I think that he could really, really develop. He's a six foot five wing and showed during the scrimmages as well that he's not afraid of competition. He went out there, put on a show in those games. Didn't shoot the uh, three ball very well for the Arizona State Sun Devils this past year. But I think with a little bit of shooting help, he could develop that. Maybe Philadelphia is not the best place for him to land if you're looking for shooting help. Uh, but nonetheless, I think he could develop into a nice young player. Pick 29, we have the Phoenix Suns here. And I think that they're a very interesting team at this point. Looking at who's left on the board, there's not necessarily a guy that absolutely jumps out to me as, oh, this should for sure be the pick. I think Herb Jones would be an interesting grab for them. I also think that Quinton Grimes does make some sense, uh, which is who I'm actually going to have them go with here. Quinton Grimes, I think, showed himself out during the combine. I think he's one of the biggest risers during that uh, period of time. And I think that he... Deserves to be a first-round pick with how he played. Played really, really well for Houston this past year, but I think showed a little bit more dynamism offensively, especially as a creator for uh, an NBA team during the combine process. And I think that the Suns here would be looking for another guy to come off the bench and really fill in some minutes off the wing. Torrey Craig was a nice addition during the year, but I think that that's really where they can improve going into next season. We'll see how they fare in the NBA Finals against the Milwaukee Bucks. Pick 30 now, the final pick here of the first round. So again, guys, hit that like button if you haven't already. Also, let me know who you think the biggest bust will be in this year's draft. Uh, and at this point, I think a guy that does make a lot of sense for them is Io Desumnu. He's got some pretty good size. I believe he's about six foot five. Uh, offers some good athleticism as well. Now, if you're the Utah Jazz, you need to add some size. You need to add some athleticism off the wing. And Io Desumnu is athletic. Now, he's a little bit more of a guard. I understand that, but I think that anyway, you can find some talent, athleticism, and a little bit of length. You have to do it if you're Utah. That's really what happened to them in that Clippers series. They didn't have enough guys who could defend on ball. I think I would assume new is going to really help them in that area. Rudy Gobert looked exploited because of the way the Clippers ran a five-out offense and attacked the other guys. Rudy Gobert's greatest asset, rim protection, wasn't as viable when you're getting spaced out like that. You need to have other guys who can cut off straight line drives and give Rudy Gobert a little bit more time to rotate into position two when you're facing that style of offense. I think this new would be a really nice grab here for them. Again, thanks guys so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, hit that subscribe button. Also like and hit the notification bell for more at Utility Sports. Thanks again guys so much and we'll catch you in the next video.